Hi, my name is Brian Bucklew from Provision Studios, and um, I was recently asked to um, uh, demonstrate how uh, to master in Pro Tools, or just basically how to master. Um, I'm going to do it in Pro Tools today. Um, I was also asked of what I prefer to master with. Um, I, I currently use Isotope Ozone 5 um, as my main mastering tool. Uh, I, I do use other elements, other plugins, um, depending on the situation, but Ozone 5 is my go-to. Um, you can see this session here that I have set up is um, one that uh, is just a stereo track. And uh, what I normally tend to do when I go to master is I'll take a, uh, a session uh, a multi-track session and I will bounce it down or mix it down to a single stereo file and then from there I will import that stereo file into a new session uh, and uh, I will master in that and you can see right here I have um, the uh, the track the, the stereo track is set up on its own um, stereo um, uh, instrument track and then here uh, you can see where I have the, uh, the Ozone plugin is on uh, a stereo auxiliary input track, which I have uh, titled Submix, and its uh, input is the Submaster. That goes into my master uh, uh, fader. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to get right into it. Um, the, the, the song I'm using today is a, uh, a demo uh, from a, a young Christian artist. Um, and basically what I do is um, uh, the, uh, the reasoning for me going into um, a, uh, a, a mastering session with just a single stereo track is simply for resources. Uh, Ozone 5 is a resource hog. If, let's say, I have a 20-track uh, session and each one of those tracks may have, you know, going into buses where they they may have delay, compression, uh, reverb. Um, I may have a, 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 a parallel compression on a kick and a snare, and I may have vocals with um, uh, different effects and stuff on it. Each one of those uh, uh, plugins uh, takes up uh, uh, processing power from my computer. Um, if then when I'm all said and done mixing, I, and I try to throw a mastering uh, uh, suite on top of that, I can maybe get into situations where I run out of processing power uh, with my computer. So that's why I do it this way: is I go and I take a, a stereo file and I just use that file with a mastering plugin on a, an auxiliary input. So anyway, um, what I tend to do is I start out, uh, I'm going to turn all these off so you can hear the difference. Um, what I tend to do first off is um, go to the graph. When you first open up Ozone 5, your EQ is normally, your, your, your post EQ or EQ2 here is normally uh, located right here after your stereo imaging uh, and your excitation. Uh, I, know, uh, I like to move it all the way to the end, hence post equalization. Then what I do there is I hit this button right here to power it on and I go right to my 20,000 Hertz and I go to my low pass and I hit flat to roll off my high end and I go to my low and hit a uh, uh, high pass flat to roll off my low end. So now basically I have created a uh, Everything in here is, is what is being introduced in the mix, and all my lows and my highs are being rolled off to the, uh, the those are the inaudible frequencies that we can't hear anyway. So it's taking some of that out of the mix there. Then I'll go to my, um, my, in, my EQ1, and I will uh, take the, the, the high frequency, which is normally, it's, it's defaulted at 16,000 hertz, and I'll take that up anywhere from a half to maybe even one to one and a half decibel, just to add some high end uh, to the to the mix. So basically, this is the song um, 
with some of the, I, the, the, the EQ in it. At that point, I tend to introduce some reverb. I'll, I'll mess around depending on what the song needs. The song is, is fine with 12 and a half. And that's... You can just hit the solo. That just gives you your solo frequency. Whatever you're affecting. The sound of your reverb. Next. I'll go with a harmonic exciter. And normally when I get to the harmonic exciter, you'll see I've got four areas here. If you right click in there, you'll see this learn feature. This is excellent because this moves your bands around so you can uh, uh, allow Ozone to tell you where it feels your, your, your song, um, these bands need to be set for your crossovers. And you can adjust them yourself. Basically, what is happening here is the uh, harmonic exciter is introducing um, uh, 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 frequency e excitation to these bands. So basically, we've got from 207 hertz to 1.74 kilohertz is our uh, we're, we're controlling that right here, and you can control how much of that is being in, is being mixed in. I tend to keep these all at 100, and depending on the song, I'll I'll adjust. How much I'm adding uh, to this harmonic excitation. Next, we're going to go to our dynamics. First thing I tend to do right here before I do anything is I have show all, and I'm going to link all four of these bands together with this button right here. And then I'm going to go, and I'm going to go with my compressor, and I'm going to hit 2.0, because I want to have 2 to 1 compression on all four bands, without a doubt. I, when I'm doing my mastering compression, I want to compress at a 2 to 1 rate. And then I normally go to one of the four bands. It doesn't matter which one. I can click one of those, and then I'm going to click Auto Gain. When you click Auto Gain, basically what is happening is you're allowing Ozone to control how much gain each band is getting. Uh, then I'm going to go back to show all. I will then remove uh, the link there because if you don't look what it, when you go to move some look how they all going to move together. I don't want that. I want to be able to control each band independently to how I move the, the, the limiter and compression there. So I'm going to remove the link at that point. What I'm trying to do here now is I want to keep these markers to the outer limits of each one of these. Now that the bass is coming to the song, I'm going to go and relearn. Earlier in the song, there was no uh, bass there, so you can see how it's it, how much higher this has has moved now because now the bass is introduced. Anyway, again, I'm trying to keep. All, all of this inside, each band inside of these two uh, 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 markers. Once I feel like I've achieved that, I normally move to the stereo imager. Again, I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to learn also here. I'm going to go into this just a little bit just to explain what my what my settings are here, why I have them set this way. Again, you, you have all four bands are represented. Um, you're going to notice right here with band one, I have a negative 3.1%. Uh, this is a stereo imager, a very powerful multi-band stereo imager. What I'm doing is I'm trying to tighten my low end. Instead of widening it, I'm actually reducing it to tighten the low end. I don't want a widespread bottom. I want my tight end to be uh, 
as tight and down the middle as I can get it. I want that to be punched right in the center of my song, and that can be accomplished right here very successfully. You can see with my band too, that's going to have some low frequency in it as well. So I don't tend to go as high with my with my second band. I only got 1.6. Then I'll introduce the higher uh, stereo spread on my higher bands. Um. The next step is the maximizer. The maximizer is probably the most powerful tool in Ozone 5. This is where you get um, the, your, um, your levels to, that will allow you to compete with what you hear on the radio or what you hear on a CD from a professionally recorded song uh, from a studio or... Um, from a mastering studio. I'm not trying to say that we as home recording gurus or guys that are just trying to, to record our bands at home are going to be able to compete with high-end uh, uh, record labels, but we, we can get to those volumes. And this is how you do it right here with this maximizer in Ozone. I'm going to turn it on. And you can see right here I've got six, negative 6.4 and my margin is negative 0.3. This is where I like to keep my my ceiling uh, for the simple fact that um, I'm going to CD when this is done, and I like to have a little bit of room uh, there. I don't want it. To, I don't want this to be set at zero. I want there to be a little safe margin, and I tend to set that at negative three. Okay. All right. Now. I know 6.4 is right, right around, or 6.5, 6.4 is where I want, I want to be for this song. I'm going to take this down right now to about 8.5 so you can see what happens when you have your threshold set too low. I'm going to go hit play. Look, what's happening here? I'm introducing clipping into my mix. That is not what you want to have happen uh, in, in this phase. I'm going to reduce it back to negative 6.4 and hit play. You can see where I'm at now. I got a little bit right there, so I could go, I could go up a little bit. By clicking on those regions, it, re it resets it for you. You can see. So if you want to clear out the clip, you can just click on those and it will clear clear that out for you and allow you to give you a new a new setting. But I never really want to have clipping go on here. And that's basically it. So you now I'm gonna do an A B for you. You're gonna hear the song with and without uh my my uh ozone mastering. Here it is in bypass without this is originally the song without mastering. with without very very powerful um, each one of these modes they introduce different things I'm not really going to go into that today because um, th that really it depends on your preference some people may prefer uh, uh, different modules here. They all do something different. Um, Isotope really is an awesome company that does excellent work for us uh, home recording guys. And again, it's it's not just for guys uh, that, that do home recording. I know plenty of professional studios that use Ozone as well. Dave Pensado uses Ozone in his videos that he that he has online. Um, and that's basically it. Um, you can give me uh, uh, an email, brianbucklew at yahoo.com, B-R-I-A-N-B-U-C-K-A-L-E-W at yahoo.com, or you can go to my website, provisionstudios.com, P-R-V-O-Z-I-O-N-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com with any questions. And I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and best of luck. Right, I'll talk to you guys later.